well, 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 you either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain because going by the internet, some people weren't very happy with All Elite Wrestling's Dynamite show around about 14 hours ago. But look, nothing is set in stone until we take this. And you don't know what this is. It's the finger of power and it will whoop your ass when it gives the good bits an up and the bad bits are down when it comes to professional wrestling shows. So yes, gear up, get all flexible, wiggle your arms. We are about to get into it. Also, just a quick bit of promotion because this Friday on What Culture Wrestling at 5:30 p.m. GMT or 12:30 EST, we are going to be doing a little bit of a live stream, and all the money raised from said live stream is going to go to the Australian Red Cross to deal with all the terrible things that are going on right there now. Look, it's all good to get mad and angry at wrestling, but it is just wrestling. It is just entertainment. That stuff is damn crucial. And look, for your money, you can get the guys to watch any single wrestling clip you want, be it bad or good, so just make them watch the whole Mae Young hand thing over and over, it'll be worth it. Let's up those doubts. I think AEW has done a really good job the last couple of weeks with their opening video packages. Not only are they very well produced, but they get you up to speed. And yes, 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 I know WWE also does this very well. We are allowed to give compliments all around. That is not a bad thing. Also, you can't judge them by the same stick. I mean, one stick is longer than my face and the other one is but a twig. So given that we are only like 14, 15 weeks in, I like it. Dave Brown also joined the commentary team and that was quite cool if you're an old school wrestling fan because of course on this evening AEW was paying tributes to the Memphis legends and this didn't really get in the way. It was more of a bit of a salute than anything else. It was fine. We were very much focused on the future and the present though because it was Hangman Page who once again was teaming up with Kenny Omega and they were taking on private party and given that once again hangman pages lower thirds were the best damn thing on the show where it just said probably not going to pay that 12 dollars to private party and that tied into last week giving it up now admittedly there were a lot of dives here including at one point when mark quen did four in a row now if you go back 24 hours or just load up what culture wrestling you will find a video where i talk about this and other aew issues in their entirety if you want to get into that chat Go and watch that video now, especially because I am going to reference it later too. So I do agree it's a bit much, but the real cool thing and the real highlight here was this ongoing story with Hangman Page. Because don't forget, all of his troubles kind of started when he did team with Kenny Omega, but a few weeks ago. And here they kept careering into each other again, even though it was by accident. But this time when Hangman went for the buckshot lariat, he stopped himself before he cracked Kenny Omega in the nose. From there, Omega eventually hit Quen with the one wing angel and got the one, two, three. And afterwards, Paige and Omega even fist bumped to make you think that everything is gonna be okay. But something is definitely not okay. Oddly, AEW then just repeated the same angle they did with Pac and Michael Nakazawa. We cut to backstage and Pac was there and he was brutalizing Nakazawa. And that sent Kenny Omega into a rage, into a fit. He was like, oh no, my friend. And he ran to help his friend. But this time, Hangman Page didn't go with him to help. And he stayed with the fans at ringside and drank some beer. And I tell you, when we do eventually pull the trigger with this, I think it's going to be great because we're taking our time. And usually when you take your time with things, it's a lot better. It's kind of like sex. Take your time. Right, talking once more again about this AEW video that went live yesterday. And again, you can go and watch it now should you so wish. I don't think anybody from All Elite Wrestling is tuning in to watch my bald-headed asshole face talk about what they're doing on their show. But I do want to say, in that video, I mentioned if you were a new fan and you were just flicking through channels and you saw a dynamite on television and then saw just some dude in the mask on commentary, you may be like, I'm very confused. Why is this man wearing a mask? I mean, it's up for you to be educated, but the people that need to do the educating are all elite wrestling, so it was just a little bit baffling. But that got sorted out on Dynamite this week because Brandy Rhodes joined the commentary team and when her and Excalibur started to get into it, she even said, what's the deal with this mask, pal? Do you wear it in the shower? And he very calmly said, no, I used to be a professional wrestling. It's a sign of respect. It's all about Mexico, so leave me alone. I very, very much appreciated that. Give it up. Fortunately, everything else to do with this segment was absolutely baffling. Down. To start as Brandy started telling us, she was only at the announce table 
because she'd been invited or something and she doesn't even care about the women's championship even though I'm pretty sure she's cared about that since the dawn of time but I do appreciate more appreciation here that she said look Chris Statlander isn't actually an alien she's a human being that just paints her face and I needed that I'd said it before here on ups and downs am I meant to think she's a real alien or am I meant to think she's a crazy person according to Brandy Rhodes crazy person. And while the match between Riho and Chris for the Women's Championship was alright, it just got so nuts towards the end because we had Mel, Chase and Awesome Kong out here from the Nightmare Collective and they were causing the distraction. Then that bald guy from the video popped out from under the ring, wherever the hell he came from, and everyone was like, oh, it's Luther, the Japanese hardcore legend. And I was like, look, I'm a wrestling fan. I don't know who Luther, the hardcore legend is. And somehow, even though all of this was going on and Riho was getting beaten up and Chris Stadland was beating up, the ref just went, well, I don't care. I don't really know what my job is. So I'll just stand here and look like an absolute goof. Look, if we're not going to get any disqualifications in AEW, then why wouldn't every single member of the roster just be like, all right, if there are no consequences, I'll just bring a gun. We talked about this before. I'll bring a gun and I'll shoot everyone and I'll pin and then I'll have all the belts. Eventually, Awesome Kong just tripped Chris Statlander and that allowed Riho to use the most devastating move in all of wrestling, the surprise roll-up, and she did retain her title. But don't think this was her joining the Nightmare Collective because at one point she was just diving at the bald guy as well. So, you know, Nightmare Collective are bad. Everybody else, I guess, is kind of good. The Nightmare Collective were then throwing fisty cuffs at everyone before she a big swole. And I think Sunny Kiss was out there to chase them away. And I think the big issue was that the fans, the audience, the crowd and the TV people just wanted to see a good match for the championship. But instead, we got an angle that really not a lot of people have bought into up until this point. And I do appreciate All Elite Wrestling trying. But maybe sometimes you've just got to cut your losses. You know, and fair enough, at least we're going all in with Brandy's group. It's not like we're tiptoeing around and sometimes we're doing it and sometimes we're not. But again, yeah, it's just not really clicking. No need to do that. This then flowed into the next match as well. Uh-oh. Down. It was Sammy Guevara versus Christopher Daniels, and I thought from a fighting point of view, they had really good chemistry, especially because it was the new guy versus the old guy that we have seen for years. And it even started to tell the narrative, oh look, Christopher Daniels may have had a bad few weeks, but now he's climbing his way back to the top. But do you know why he lost? Yet more interference. This time it was from Pentagon, and that made sense on paper, but boy did it make Christopher Daniels look like an absolute chump who just turned around, which allowed Sammy Guevara to smack him in the back of the head and indeed get the pin for Then I was all like, you know what, it doesn't matter because I'm sure this is all leading to Christopher Daniels being the leader of the Dark Order. And then that got taken away from me as well, just like my hair five years ago. Because they were then also walking to the ring and they were like, hey man, we want to recruit you. Christopher said, nah, I don't want to do that. So they started beating him up until the Young Bucks made the save. So now I'm just going to have to keep everything crossed that it's a Survivor Series 1998 scenario. You remember that, The Rock pretended he hated Vince McMahon. But as it turned out, they were in cahoots. Let's hope they're doing that again. I just think the return of the Fallen Angel as a bad guy after he has been through so much sadness would make a lot of sense. We don't half get some random matches on Dynamite 2 because then it was Cody and Dustin Rhodes taking on the Lucha Brothers. It was like Blood Brothers versus Fake Brothers, but it was very good. Arn Anderson played a huge role again because he was at ringside making sure everything was fair and square and eventually, if you can believe it, after of course we had done so many flippy cool moves your brain couldn't keep up with it, Dustin Rhodes hit the final reckoning on Phoenix and those two won. Yes! Thankfully as well we did address the MJF stuff from seven days ago. I was a bit worried at one point that we were just going to zoom past it, but we didn't because Tony Schiavone got in the ring. He said, Cody, you just had a great victory, but look, what everybody wants to know is what do you have to respond to your arch nemesis after he gave you all those stupid hurdles you have to jump through if you want to match with him. And then Arn Anderson jumped in like he was Cody's dad. And he was like, look, my son doesn't have to talk to you. We will have more time to think about it and we'll get back to you next week. What do you mean more time to think about it? You had a whole week to think about it. It wasn't that bad. I'm just being a bit silly and just revving things up for the fun of it. But after John Muxley had done that on last week's episode, I think here, Cody one, could have spoken for himself and said, Dad, give me a minute. It's all good. And two, just told us what he was going to do. Lanny Poffo was then backstage and joining in with all the legend stuff after this. And he has the greatest voice in the world. It's a bit sad he didn't do one of his poems because they always make me laugh. 
Ricardo talks like this. It's fantastic. I want to talk like Lanny Poffo. My word, thank the world for MJF. I mean, he's only like 13 years old and he's already brilliant. Up. He marched out with Wardlow and just said, Cody, you are a massive bitch. You tell him, Maxwell, you tell him hard. I mean, he did give Cody the count of 10 to get out here, but when he didn't, he absolutely lost it, especially because instead of Cody, he got the returning Diamond Dallas page. MJF was checking his phone as Diamond was talking, which was brilliant straight away. And DDP was promoting his Twitter and his Instagram and DDPY, because that's just what DDP does, before he turned to Maxwell and said, I haven't forgotten what you did a few weeks ago, so let's settle this right now. Before we got there though, MJF called out the Butcher Blade and the Bunny, and I really did like that because finally all of that storyline makes sense. And then he told DDP that he was gonna put him in the hospice and don't forget you only go to a hospice when you're about to die and that he was going to bang, you know, bang, that's what DDP does, one of Dallas Page's daughters. Who the flip said kayfabe was dead? Everybody reacted to this like it was a bomb. This sent DDP bonkers as you'd expect and even the Butcher and the Blade tried to get one over him. He started busting out diamond cutters and boy did the fans love that. But this is MJF we're talking about and he picked his moment and bam, he kicked Page right in the balls and after this and everything i saw at wrestle kingdom last weekend i think my testicles hurt because how many times have we seen people kicked in the ghoulies mjf then taunted cody until he was chased off by qt marshall and dustin rhodes and that was a bit of a head scratcher because why wasn't it cody who came out and did this but look as i've said before i did want more angles in aew so i'm glad we're getting more angles in aew but that doesn't mean they're all going to get ups just because i'm getting more angles that's like saying uh waiter can i have a pizza please and he brings me a pizza and then goes Bleh, and vomits on it i don't go well i've got a pizza so who cares and that is well too harsh i don't think anything on this show was vomit worthy i'm just trying to make the point i feel like i have this was mostly good Surely Cody should have been the guy to chase him away. The Jurassic Express then won a match. That's fine by me, because those three are great. And of course, it means Luchasaurus was fighting on Dynamite. And after what was quite frankly an incredible backlash, that I said I wasn't going to do Dino Ups anymore, I give it back to you, Dino Up. This trio was taken on Orange Cassidy and the best friends, and it was just so stupid. It was just so dumb. It was just so ridiculous, but in the best possible way, you could turn your brain off and just enjoy professional wrestling for what it is. Isn't it fantastic? They all hit some big moves before Luchasaurus used his Tyrannosaurus powers to take control. And then of course, all the wrestlers heard that magical sound in a six man tag that we can't hear, but they can. It goes something like, woo! And they all got in the ring and they all started to fight. It happens every single time. The finish saw Taylor go for a power bomb, but Jungle Boy rolled him up for the most surprising, devastating move in all of sports entertainment. The roll-up, two-on-one show is a little bit much, but to be fair, that's more WWE's fault than AEW's. And again, I had such an enjoyable ride here, I'm happy to let it slide. We got some match announcements after this, and the best thing about AEW only having quarterly pay-per-views is that Dynamite becomes damn loaded. I mean, we are going to get Pac versus Darby Allen. We are going to get Chris Statlander and Sheeta taking on the Nightmare Collective. We are going to get The Butcher and The Blade and MGF taking on DDP, QT Marshall, Dustin Rhodes, and we're going to get The Inner Circle taking on The Jurassic Express. I am down for all of this. It was then time to pay off everything between John Moxley, Chris Jericho, and The Inner Circle and say what you want about this show. I thought this was pure fire and proof that the simplest things are often the best things. Up. It was great straight away because Chris Jericho got on the microphone and because they were in Memphis went, look, let's get one thing straight. Elvis Presley sucks. If he was here right now, I would whoop his ass and the Beatles were better and they'd also whoop Elvis Presley's ass. Of course they would, Chris Jericho. That'd be four on one. He told us that the 4GT was all gassed up and ready to go and all Moxley needed to do was say yes. And then pretty amazingly, John Moxley got on the microphone and said yes. He wants to dominate wrestling. He wants to dominate in AEW. And what better way to do that than by joining with the most dominant force in all of wrestling. I mean, it was genuinely surprising. And John Moxley's delivery was so good. You were like, well, I think he's going to swerve him, but maybe he's not. They all celebrated with the bubbly luck. They had just won the lottery. John Moxley asked for the keys to the Ford GT. And then Jericho, you made a massive faux pas because you said, oh, the car's worth $750,000. But last week, you said it was worth millions. Make up your mind. I mean, this worked so well, the fans even chanted, you sold out at Mox as they were all enjoying 
a bit of the bubbly, but even then, he just rode through all these chants like he had turned heel. But of course, that's not what he did. And again, it was really fun. It was really entertaining. He just went, oh, Chris, I forgot to tell you something. I'm making it up. None of this is true. I would never join you. You're an absolute ass clown. And then he took a bottle of champagne and he cracked it over his head. He was then dishing out paradigm shifts to everybody that got in his way, only leaving when Jake Hagar got in, because I guess he thought, I oh, know, I probably could paradigm shift you, but you're a little bit crazy, so I'm just gonna leave. And this was the last thing we saw before Dynamite went off air, and I thought it was badass. We rarely end these things with an angle, usually we have a match, so it was a little bit different, and it made me really want to see what's going to happen between John Moxley and Chris Jericho. Now that I think about it, I think it may be time to give him the AEW title. I would pop for it hard. So yeah, look, there were a couple of things on this week's episode of Dynamite that weren't great, but don't forget the individual bits that did put a smile on your face. And I know a lot of people are super mad about it, and you're allowed to be. Like I say, you have an opinion, I have an opinion. Opinions make the world go round. It's why Twitter exists, but when we get the spinning arrow, it's gonna get an up. Was it the best episode of Dynamite? No. Are there some things they could do better? Yes but I still got a lot of love out of it. Now, don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know what you thought about the show. I already know, Miller's a dick. Miller's an asshole. Screw you, Miller. Boo, Miller, boo. Oh, here it comes. What am I going to do? Like, share, and subscribe. Head over to whatculture.com. Read yourself some articles. Follow What Culture on Twitter, What Culture WWE, and watch more videos here on What Culture Wrestling, especially that AEW one, given that I mentioned it 7,000 times. My name is Sam from What Culture. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for engaging. Thank you for being passionate. It means a hell of a lot to me. Please do join in with that live stream on Friday. It's for a good cause. Let's come together and put some good back into the world.